السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters Hajj is the fifth pillar of Islam We know that we've heard it, we believe in it and we consider it part of our faith and the Islam that we have actually accepted and surrendered to. May Allah Almighty make it easy for us and may He be pleased with us. May He help us and guide us to fulfill all the pillars of this deen in a beautiful way. You go back to Ibrahim alayhi salam. What was his call? He called towards the worship of one Allah, one deity, the supreme God, the one who created absolutely everything. You look at the Quran, Allah Almighty makes mention of this young boy who grew up in a community where his own father was responsible, not just for worshiping the stones and the idols and so on, but he spread it. And he continued to question his father. He he said, these stones cannot hear you, they cannot see you, they cannot talk to you, they cannot move, they cannot help themselves. How will they help you? So this was the question. Similarly, if anyone were to inflict any harm on these stones, they themselves would not be able to do anything. And Ibrahim alayhi salam continued to question when the questions were posed to his parents as well as a few others, they became angry, they became upset. And what did they say? They immediately resorted to threats because they didn't want to be questioned. You're not allowed to question. Do as your forefathers have done. We found our forefathers worshipping these idols, these stones, these artifacts, these things that were carved and made by us. We made them, we worshipped them. We found our forefathers doing the same thing. So we expect you not to question, not to ask, but to surrender. But the inquisitive mind of this young child, Allah Almighty had designed that he would question. He would say, but why? Why are you worshipping this? Can't you worship something much more powerful than this? So what is there of power? Ibrahim alayhi salam was threatened. If you begin to question, we're going to kick you out of this community or throw you out of the community. If you begin to question, we're going to burn you in a fire. We will create a huge furnace and we will burn you. In fact, just prior to the threat of burning, Ibrahim alayhi salam decided that these people are not listening to me. So let me uh, destroy these idols one day and let's see what happens. And very sharp, the young boy, when everyone went out one day, he stayed behind. He's saying, I'm not feeling too well. And obviously he wasn't too well in the sense that spiritually everything was going wrong. And so he decided, he said, you know what? I am going to destroy the idols and I leave the one, the biggest one. And that big one, I'm going to hang the uh, axe that I used in order to destroy all of these on that particular big one. And when they came back from their worship or wherever they had gone for the festival, they noticed the idols were broken. Uh, he made them uh, into pieces except for the big one, so that when they came back, they could ask questions. When they asked him a question, Man fa'ala hadha bi alihatina? Who has done this to our, our gods? So someone says, Samihna fatan yadhkuruhum. We heard a young boy mention them. Yuqalu lahu Ibrahim. His name is Ibrahim. They went to Ibrahim uh, and they asked him a question. And they in fact brought him in front of everyone. What was the question? Ya Ibrahim, did you do this to our gods, O Ibrahim? He says, Kabiruhum hadha fasaluhum. He didn't say it was the big one, but he says, This big one here, ask it. Ask it. Fasaluhum. In kanu yantiqun. If these things actually speak, ask it. Let's see. Obviously, they were not even going to face the big one and say, who did this to you? Because they knew that this is not the way. So 
Then they immediately became angry with Ibrahim and they say, some of them said burn him and uh, they then made the fire, they then threw him into it, they catapulted him according to some of the narrations into that fire. And Allah says, قُلْنَا يَا نَارُ كُونِي بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمٍ Miracle number one, Allah says, we told the fire, be cool for Ibrahim and you be a means of peace for this young boy. So the fire was instructed by the Lord of the fire. Anyway, Ibrahim alayhi salam was saved and mashallah, uh, it is reported that even the shackles he was tied with were burnt, but not him. His skin was intact and he emerged from it so beautifully and they saw it, but they still rejected. So as he continued, he went to Harran, a, a, a different place. Uh, who had accepted his message? Hardly anyone, just his wife, his nephew, that's it. Initially, there were very few people and then it grew a little bit. But that particular stage, what was the call? He is searching for the one to worship. Who is worthy of me putting my head on the ground for? He questioned, is the, stars, is the star perhaps worthy of it or are the stars worthy of it? No, they are not because they disappear. What about the moon? The moon also sets, so that is not worthy of worship either. The sun is huge. Is it worthy of worship? No, it's not. Why? Because it sets as well. So he says at the end of the day, subhanAllah, when he questioned and asked and searched and looked and continued to ask and think, he says, I've turned my face. I turned my face to the one who created the heavens and the earth, the skies and the earth in worship only, purely, upright. And I'm not from among those who associate worship, uh, meaning associate partners with Allah Almighty. So he says, I'm going to worship the one who made everything. And Allah Almighty loved this. Allah says, وَحَاجَّهُ قَوْمُهُ His people came to him and questioned him. They argued with him. قَالَ أَتُحَاجُّنِّي فِي اللَّهِ Are you arguing with me about Allah? وَقَدْ هَدَانِ And he has guided me. And they were worried about the idols. He says, how can I be worried about the idols? And you guys are not worried about the fact that you have associated partners with the Lord of the worlds. He says, how can I fear that which you have associated as partners with the, with the maker alone? He says, and how can, how can that be? You guys are not even fearing the one who has created you and you're associating partners with him. You're supposed to be more in fear than I am. What a powerful question. Which one of the two groups are more deserving of peace, of calmness, of tranquility, of contentment, of goodness, of uprightness? Which one of the two groups is more deserving of that? You know, the question is simple. If only but you knew. What a powerful verse. Allah says, the response obviously comes, those who believe, and they have not contaminated that belief with association of partners with Allah. Zulm here is referring to shirk or uh, association of partners with Allah, those who have believed and have only worshipped Allah and none other than Allah. Allah says for them is true peace, for them is calmness, contentment, peace in this world, peace in the grave, peace in the hereafter. They are the ones who are rightly guided. And Allah says, وَتِلْكَ حُجَّتُنَا آتَيْنَاهَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ That is the evidence, the strong, powerful evidence that we gave Abraham, may peace be upon him, Ibrahim alayhi salam, against his own people. تِلْكَ حُجَّتُنَا آتَيْنَاهَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ نَرْفَعُ دَرَجَاتٍ مَنْ نَشَاءُ Allah says, we raise the statuses of whomsoever we wish. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ حَكِيمٌ عَلِيمٌ Allah, your Lord is indeed most wise most knowledgeable. And Allah Almighty says, We granted him children 
and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and progenies of prophets, Isaac, Jacob, and so on, mentioning the one lineage. Later on, Allah mentions the other lineages, that of Ismail, and it goes down all the way to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But the lineage of the prophet Ishaq or Isaac, may peace be upon him. You have Jacob thereafter, you have Joseph, Benjamin, so many others, Yusuf alayhi salam, Binyamin alayhi, alayhi salam. May Allah's peace be and blessings be upon all of them. So Allah says, this was Ibrahim. He argued, he with his people, he discussed with them, he presented to them, he answered questions, he, he fielded questions. And subhanAllah, he questioned at the same time. And all of it was to do what? To search for who is worthy of worship. And that's where the statement comes from, La ilaha illallah, there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. Who is Allah? The maker who made absolutely everything. He alone deserves to be worshipped and none other than him. So this is Allah, Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal, Lord of the world. Imagine here is a young man telling people, don't worship the sticks, don't worship the stones, don't worship the idols, don't worship people, don't worship trees, don't worship animals, don't worship anything. Worship is only for the one who made you. So say, O oh you who made me, you are the only one who is deserving of worship. None is worthy of worship besides you who made me. And then when you engage Engage in your acts of worship, you constantly ensure that it is only for the one who made you. Number one. Number two is, then you have the prophets of Allah who came down to teach you how to worship Allah. Ibrahim alayhi salam himself was a prophet of Allah. Allah taught him what to do. And that's why Allah instructed him even to travel. For Ibrahim alayhi salam, the travel under the instruction of Allah was an act of worship. So if he did it only and solely for Allah, it was an act of worship and that's what he did. When Allah told him to leave his family in the barren land of Makkah, he left them there. Hajar, may peace be upon her, Ismail, who he had after so many years. So he left them there. It was a difficult situation, but it was for Allah. My maker has asked me to leave them and go. He will take care of them. That's the conviction. That's the lesson. The call of Ibrahim, obey Allah's instruction, worship him alone. Ibrahim alayhi salam, if you look at him carefully, you will notice that he was tested a lot with his family, with his, the people around him. He had to leave some of them. He had to do something. He had to build the house, sacrifice of his son Ismail and so much more. Every time he passed the test and he was tested with something bigger and subhanAllah, his community and his people didn't like him. Initially, they actually drove him out. When he went out, where did he go? He went to Harran, he continued, he went further. And this is why it stretches from Baytul Maqdis, from Makkah to Baytul Maqdis. Makkah all the way to Baytul Maqdis, Jerusalem, all of that, Ibrahim alayhi salam, connected to all these places, one after the other. And he moved and he traveled a lot. At that time, there was no transport as there is today. So amazing. What was the call? The call was to worship Allah alone. My brothers, my sisters, have you heeded that call? Do you worship Allah alone? Do you ask yourself, am I worshiping a person? Do I render an act of worship to a thing, to wealth, to something else, to a stick or a stone or a tree or a grave or a person? If it is an act of worship, you're not allowed to render it for anyone or anything besides he who made you. That's the essence of la ilaha illallah. You say, you and I say the meaning of it and claim that we declare it. What is the declaration? There is none worthy of worship. Those two words worthy of worship are of essence here. None worthy of worship. So there are so many deities being worshiped besides Allah, but are they worthy of worship? The answer is no. That's why, when you say la ilaha illallah in the Arabic language, there is something called nafi and ithbat. You are denying deities besides Allah and you are confirming that Allah is the only deity. Who is Allah? My maker, the one who made me, that's it. Whoever made me, la ilaha illallah. There is none worthy of worship besides him who made me. So let's take a look at this. If you are to translate it as there is 
no, there is, la, there is no God but Allah. One might argue with you and say, no, there are so many gods besides Allah, but are they worthy of worship? No, they're not. So there is no God worthy of worship besides Allah. As for the gods that exist, uh, according to the understanding of people, they are just things that are being worshipped that we would believe are not worthy of worship. Right? So that's why whenever we translate it, we say, La ilaha illallah. There is none worthy of worship besides Allah. Muhammadun Rasulullah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. Now, in the same way, if someone lived at the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam, the second part of the statement would be Ibrahim Rasulullah. Ibrahim is the messenger of Allah. Uh, Yaqub Rasulullah. Musa Rasulullah. Uh, Isa Rasulullah and so on. Jesus is the messenger of Allah. Musa is the, Moses is the messenger of Allah. Abraham is the messenger of Allah. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Ibrahim alayhi salam called out to Allah a lot. Part of this call of Ibrahim, he, his message was primarily one thing, and that is worship Allah alone, no one else. Nothing deserves to be worshiped worshipped besides Allah. Look, in the Arabic language, when they're explaining La ilaha illallah, everyone says, La ma'abuda bihaqqin illallah. La ma'abuda bihaqqin illallah. There is no true deity besides Allah. There is no one worthy of worship besides Allah. There it goes. So this is the message of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And it is so convincing. Allah calls it a hujjah. Allah calls it a, an evidence. Allah calls it something powerful, convincing, the evidence, the dalil that you present to say, listen, have, you're worshipping. What are you worshipping? Are you worshipping anything or anyone besides he who made you? Now, guess what? When someone makes you, he can make again and again. If he made you from nothing and transformed you into soil and clay and then transformed you into a droplet of semen and you continued and your species came about from nothing initially, to resurrect you is even easier. So when you die, where will you go? You're so sophisticated, oh man, you have a brain, you have feelings, you have a heart, you have connections, you have relations, you toil, you work hard, you have so much of goodness, you're looking forward to it. Do you really think that when you die, it's the end all? It's, it is the end of everything? No, it cannot be. That's why Ibrahim alayhi salam continued to say, Oh my Lord, have mercy on me the day I return to you. Have mercy on me on the day of judgment. Oh Allah, لا تخزني يوم يبعثون يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون. Do not disgrace me on the day that you resurrect everyone because I know I am. And, and this is simple thinking, by the way. Very simple thinking to say, look at me. I want to meet you, whoever is on the other side of the screen watching this right now. I'd like to meet you one day, perhaps we can greet each other, we can talk to each other, we can know each other with purity, with goodness. And perhaps we might have a few questions for each other, we might want to uh, discuss something, laugh about something, perhaps uh, be sad together about something or whatever it might be, anything. When am I going to get that opportunity? When this world is so finite, this world is so narrow, this world is so limited. And I'm such a complicated creature of Allah. The most complicated is humankind. Humankind. The brains we have, the posture we have, the understanding we have, the abilities and capacities we have, mind-boggling. Every day we will be discovering more about ourselves. And every day we will continue to discover more about the creation of the Almighty until the end. Man thinks he is very intelligent. Look at all the telescopes that they've sent billions of kilometers away. The telescopes are discovering more and more planets and galaxies and coming back to us with information of things we never ever dreamt of. And imagine these planets, the Earth is one of the smallest ones of them and we are so excited that we're on it. We don't even know much about the rest of it and we think we did or we thought we did and we think we do. But Allah says, hang on, oh man, you know nothing. You've been given a droplet of knowledge. And that's the reason why every day we're discovering more about ourselves because of the greatness of the Maker and every day we're discovering more about the environment because of the greatness of the Maker. Do you really think you're going to just disappear into thin air the day that you die. Absolutely not. So, O oh, you who made me, have mercy on me the day I'm returned to you. O oh, you who made me, grant me goodness in this world and the next. That's the call of Ibrahim alayhi salam. 
the call of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah speaks of the supplications during the Hajj, and one of them that is mentioned in the Quran, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al nar. Oh Allah, grant us goodness in this world and grant us goodness in the hereafter and save us from the punishment of the fire. So it's amazing how Ibrahim alayhi salam, the call is towards worshipping Allah alone. But he called out to Allah to say, Oh Allah, protect me and my offspring. Grant us myself and my family, my progeny, goodness. Those who believe, Allah says, even those who don't believe, we will give them goodness in the world temporarily. We will grant them. And that's the reason why you see the people who don't believe in Allah, they're also being granted a lot of goodness because that's the promise of Allah. But my brothers, my sisters, Ibrahim alayhi salam asked for Mecca to become a place that the hearts of the people inclined towards. I'm inclined towards it, are you? Well, that was the call of Ibrahim to Allah. When we say the call of the Prophet Ibrahim, we speak about Tawheed, the oneness of Allah, worshipping Allah alone. That was the primary call, the foundation. That's the reason why Allah chose him as a Khalil, because he was chosen by Allah from the very beginning anyway. And do you know that he is connected to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? That's all his progeny, those who came after him, the prophets from his family. And Allah loved him. He sacrificed. He was true to Allah. Allah tested him and he was true. Every word he relied on Allah. He trusted Allah. He knew he belonged to Allah. Say, my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, my death, all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever I do belongs to Allah. I belong to Allah. I'm ultimately going to return to Allah, Allah Almighty. So he asked Allah for goodness for Mecca, the hearts of the people to incline, that they be given produce, that they be granted safety, security. Look at the place, subhanAllah. Look at the place. SubhanAllah. Have you thought of it? When you answer the call of Allah, see what happens when you call out to Allah. You see, because when Allah called out, well, called you to do something, you listened and obeyed to the best of your ability. Allah Almighty definitely will grant you. Sometimes not immediately because he knows what's best for you, but he will always give you. So don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Here is Hajj. We're talking about the broader benefits of Hajj and guidelines and so on. We have to speak about the call of the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam from both angles. One is that message that he had and two is when he called out to Allah. What did he ask for? He asked for goodness. Oh Allah, keep us steadfast on the deen. O oh Allah, from my children, make them on the deen, keep them on this path. How many of us continuously pray that our children remain steadfast, worshipping their maker alone in the Abrahamic faith of Islam? How many of us make dua, supplicate to Allah Almighty regularly to keep us rightly guided? We're supposed to be concentrating in prayer when we say Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. That's Allah. But Ibrahim alayhi salam says, Not just me, oh Allah. Ij'alna muslimaini laka wa min durriyatina ummatan muslimatan laka. Oh Allah, arina manasikana. Oh Allah, show us what we have to do in order to worship you correctly. And uh, oh Allah, make us submitters, the two of us, Ibrahim and Ismail, make us submitters unto you and from our offspring, our children, make them submitters unto you, O oh Allah. Let them submit. May Allah grant that to us and our offspring. May Allah keep us and our children steadfast in submission, worshipping Allah alone and constantly asking themselves, do I worship my maker alone or have I added things? If we've added things, here is the time. The Hajj is a reflection to actually wash whatever dirt there might be in our worship. May Allah forgive us and may Allah grant us that steadfastness and purity of worship. Remember, when we say ikhlas, Something that is khalis lillah, solely and only for Allah, sincerely for Allah. It is mukhlis, it is only for Allah, no one else. I read my Quran, I do my dhikr, my remembrance of Allah, I do good deeds, I help people, I do. All of that is for Allah. 
And all of that is for the pleasure of my maker. He's instructed, I have read about it, I have seen what the messengers have had to say, and I have adopted, I make sure I worship none other than him, and I make sure that I'm kind to the creatures that he has created and kept me in coexistence with. Subhanallah, that's amazing. So Ibrahim alayhi salam was a kind man. He was a beautiful man. He was a very wise man. Allah has blessed him in so many different ways. And Allah tested him one after the other. He passed all of those tests. Imagine if you take a look at the son. He was in love with his son. After how many years did he have that particular son? Ismail alayhi salam, may peace be upon them all. And Allah says, we know you love him so much. We know you're connected with him. Who do you love more? Do you love Allah or do you love something Allah's given you? Obviously, we love what Allah's given us, but Allah comes first. We're going to test you. Allah says, we want you to sacrifice. Now, obviously, this is revelation. Revelation has stopped. No one can come today and say, oh, Allah's instructed me in a dream to sacrifice so and so and so and so. Not at all. There's no more revelation. Revelation has stopped in Qata al Wahi. Revelation has stopped, but that was a messenger of Allah. And Allah Almighty says, we tested him. He went ahead and tried to fulfill that. In fact, he was fulfilling it when Allah replaced the child with a ram, subhanAllah, from Jannah. And Allah Almighty told him, oh Ibrahim, you are true. You have been very true, subhanAllah, to the instruction that we gave you and to us, you've been very, very true. Allah says that was the greatest test. I mean, who, who else was ever tested with that? And Allah has kept the sacrifice, not just on an annual basis all over the world, but in the Hajj as a part of it, it is there too. It is there too. The entire Hajj is a celebration. And at the same time, a cleansing. A cleansing for what? Your heart and your soul, your acts of worship and your connection with Allah. That's what it is. It is a resetting of everything in a beautiful way. Whatever machineries, if I can call it that, within yourselves or myself, like a motor vehicle, every so often you need to service it. Something's gone wrong, the fuel, whatever, whatever it may be, you reset it, you readjust it, you overhaul it, you actually ensure that everything is done proper so that it works once again. You've renewed it. You come back home clean, clean, pure, mashallah, new beginning. May Allah Almighty grant that to us. May Allah make it easy for those who are going for Hajj. This call of Ibrahim, very important. Wherever you go in Mecca, you will have memories of Ibrahim alayhi salam. In Mecca, in the Mataf, there is something known as Al Maqam. Maqam Ibrahim. Allah mentions it in the Quran. مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى Allah mentions it in the Quran and the prayer that is, uh, that is made in that vicinity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you circumambulate that uh, Kaaba, after seven rounds, you should fulfill two units of prayer in that direction of the Haram. In fact, facing the Kaaba, obviously, but uh, to, uh, behind, somewhere behind Maqam Ibrahim in that sort of section of the entire Haram. There's no specified place, but somewhere in that particular uh, portion of the Haram. And what is that Maqam? It is the footprints of Ibrahim alayhi salam. It is reported there was a stone that Allah had sent in order for Ibrahim alayhi salam to uh, be taken up just like what we would use a ladder for, to be taken up to put the stones to build the Kaaba, and then it would come down automatically, pick up the next stone, take it up, and the stones were interlocking and they were fitting one another. That was a gift, a miracle of Allah. Just like when Nuh alayhi salam, Noah, was building the ark, it's reported that he planted the trees and each one of the trees automatically fitted like a jigsaw with the next one. And he knew as though they were numbered from Allah. And that's how it was built and people saw the miracle, but they still denied the message. They saw the miracles with these prophets of Allah. They denied the message. Will you deny the message? Will you worship deities besides Allah? Will you worship anyone besides he who made you? Will you put your head on the ground for anyone besides he who made you? Will you declare worship of any sort for anyone or anything besides Allah? I tell you, a Muslim says, La ilaha illallah, none worthy of worship besides Allah, the one who made me, the one whom I'm going to return to, O oh, you who, 
whom I'm going to return to have mercy upon me the day I return to you. I am convinced that we have a much better place that we are going to. Much better place than where we are right now that we are going to be returning to. And Allah Almighty will grant us, he has promised whatever you wish at that time in that place, he will give it to you. So let's look forward to that paradise and we ask Allah to forgive all our shortcomings, strengthen us, and really we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the same way that Allah has blessed Ibrahim alayhi salam and his offspring and his family and the families on all sides. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.